Hello, everyone. This is Coach Clayton, and this is the Women's Empowerment Interview episode. And today we have Lindsay as our guest to discuss her amazing journey of overcoming obstacles in her life personally and professionally. Hey, Lindsay, how are you? Hey, how are you, Coach Clayton? Good, good. Uh, now, Lindsay, I wanted you, I wanted to invite you on this episode to just discuss your obstacles, discuss your amazing business, and just to be an inspiration to women. Um, the reason why I started this uh, video podcast was to really inspire women, because as you know, there's so much going on, and I want to be part of the solution of inspiration instead of, you know, negativity and things like that. So again, welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, my name, as she said, my name is Lindsay, Lindsay Tramell Jones. I own Organized Chaos Design Company, which is a brand identity design agency for DEI coaches. I'm part-time uh, entrepreneur, so I am a full-time active duty soldier. So I have oh. that doing my nine to five. That's that's what I do. Nice. So you don't see me like this often. But, okay. Um, <laughs> And I'm a mom of two. I like to say I'm a new mom again because we have a 12 year old and a nine month old. So we have that. We have a gap. I, I, have, I have stuff all over the place. <laughs> and then, um, I'm a mom. I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. I'm a soldier, and I'm a business owner. And I'm just happy to share some things I've overcome in my personal life, mm -hmm. in my um, professional life, and I'm just here to let y'all have it know it all <laughs> nice nice very good now i have a question for you i know that uh you had explained or indicated that sometimes you have um issues with learning how to trust your own intuition and entrusting yourself tell me a little bit about that and i i'm gonna say mm -hmm. so i'm the youngest of four okay. and so when you're the youngest, you're usually overshadowed by the oldest. And some, I was always trying to, well, such and such did, did this, so I need to do this, or I need to do that. And I wouldn't necessarily, growing up as a kid, mm -hmm. I wasn't in tune with what I wanted to do. I was too worried about trying to be like this sister or trying to make sure I held up these values from, from my family, or I didn't disappoint this. It was just a, a lot of pressure. And nobody told me I had to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just a lot of pressure that I was putting on myself. And I didn't trust my instincts that I actually knew stuff. And then it also was part of people, especially as young black girls, people were like, well, don't be too loud. Don't be too this. Don't be too that. Don't be too bossy. <laughs> and you're trying to suppress all these things because you don't want to be too bossy, too loud, too ghetto, mm -hmm. too white. Um, mm -hmm. And so you don't know what you don't know. This is what my instincts are telling me, but everybody else is telling me this is being too whatever. And mm -hmm. it took a while for me to start trusting my instincts and it still it still comes up sometimes like those things just don't just go away but there are times when I'm like well am I being too this or am I being too girly because I'm in the army so am I being too girly <laughs> so, <laughs> those are like those trusting your intuition trusting your instincts and um understanding who you are it does take time and those are some that's I had to overcome that and it's still a battle here and there mm -hmm. So Lindsay, what do you usually do when there is a battle? Because for me, when you say, don't be too bossy, don't be too loud. Yes, mm -hmm. I never really thought of it that way. But yes, that is what we are told. And I have two daughters. Um, one is 23, one is um, will be 27. And I've always told them to be you. I don't care what anyone tells you to be you. So they were brought up that way. Um, but with me, and especially in my generation, we were always told, um, taught of like black excellence and to be, you know, you need to be better than everyone else. You need to, like you said, not be bossy, but show that you can do this much better than others. So yeah. how do you, when the way that I deal with this is I always tell myself I am enough and I am, I am, um, who I am. That's it. You know, I'm for people. 
And some people may not be for me, but this is me and I'm going to always live in my truth. So Lindsay, how do you deal with it? So for me, I, um, I deal with it with affirmations, kind of like you, I tell, get up in the morning, tell myself these uh, daily affirmations. Um, I am where I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. I got here because of me, I, like I'm enough. I am ha- I am able to do the things that I've been placed here to do because I am me because I've done been through all this stuff. And it took a while to come to terms with I am enough. Um and I like to call it my my personal life, my my shack, the movie like the like the book, the shack. I call it my shack moment. Mm-hmm. So I've been married I was married previously and we had before we separated when I separate ways we had what I like to call my shack the shack moment so he it was a toxic relationship but um he tore up all my clothes put them in that little shed in the back mm-hmm. and then like then he left so when I went to the shed to clean up because it was time to move it was like in the movie like this is this is I am enough I deserve better I deserve to be loved I deserve to um be seen mm-hmm. I I don't have to suppress how smart I am. I don't have to suppress all this greatness that I have. Mm -hmm. And some people, and you lose people when you get to that point. (laughs) Because some Uh, people are like, (laughs) when did you become this diva? I was always this person. I was just suppressing it because Mm -hmm. I felt like I needed to dim my light to make yours, to to Mm -hmm. allow you to shine. And I, once I, once that moment happened, it's terrible. It had to be a bad moment, but it, brought me closer to who I'm supposed to be and gave me the confidence to be able to allow my light to shine from within. Mm, I love it. I I love it. Now, tell me about a little bit about how you decided to be, I'm, I'm going to move to Korea now. Okay. <laughs> how did you decide I want to be in the military? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is looking, you, at, looking at you, Lindsay, <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> Um, so I graduated in 2006 from mm-hmm. Johnson C. Smith University, mm-hmm. real blue and gold. Um, yes. and <laughs> in 2006, we were in a recession okay, and our yep. professors were like, look, good job. We'll get your degree, but mm-hmm. ain't no jobs out here. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to have anywhere to work. And I've seen, um, my aunts who went to college 10 years later, they're still paying back student loans. Okay. And I was like, I, I can't even find a job. I'm going to pay back some student loans. Mm-hmm. So I, my, one of my friends had asked me to take her to the recruiting station. And I took her and she has Crohn's disease. So she was disqualified. Okay. So then they're giving me, so they start talking to me because, you know, it's all about numbers. So mm-hmm. they're giving me the rundown of all the things. We can go get money for college. This isn't like I just graduated. This was in October, 2006. Okay. I graduated in May. And he said, we'll pay back your student loans. <laughs> and you're like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Me? You should. Have me. <laughs> and that's how I ended up joining. I made sure I chose a job. My degree is in mass communication. So I chose a job in that career field. Mm-hmm. So if I only did the five years, then at least I got my five years of experience that everybody wanted me to have straight out of college. Mm-hmm. Um and that's how I ended up joining because it was the financially responsible decision for a 21 year old me. Okay, I love it. I love okay, very good. What did you find in your career at, um, in the military? What did you think was one of the biggest obstacles and what was something that what is something that you absolutely love about it? Ooh, I think. The biggest obstacle for me mm-hmm. would be that I I am girly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the, our, the, the military culture has shifted a lot from the um, 15 years that I've been in. But when I started out, it was like, you need to be loud, yeah. you need to be cussing people out, <laughs> and you need to be doing this, you need to be in their face, and that's what a leader is. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, that's just not my energy. Like I don't. <laughs> that's too much energy. Yeah. And I got to my first duty station, and mm-hmm. he's he probably watched 
that one of my mentors mm-hmm. and he we was doing some kind of water training mm-hmm. and he was and I did my part I was like all right I'm chilling now I'm sitting down he was like yeah. are you gonna you not gonna get back in the water I was like sergeant I don't want to get my hair wet <laughs> I love it <laughs> and I've just always been that person mm-hmm. and but as I grew in my career, I found out that it's easier to continue. Don't try to be that whatever people say, yeah. and you'll still be successful. And I have a different relationship with the younger with the younger soldiers that work for me because I'm not trying to be this different persona. They mm-hmm. like to say, they're like, you're like my aunt. Like I feel bad when I do something wrong. Like I'm, <laughs> they they like, you know, when you're a kid that's done something wrong that I'm trying to hide. Mm-hmm. Like I can see them from a mile away. Like, uh uh-uh. mm-hmm. <laughs> come over here. It was like I knew you was gonna call me. Yeah, what you why are you walking like that? Like <laughs> so you just have to. It was the biggest obstacle for me, but I learned to embrace it and it has helped my career tremendously and I'm doing pretty good for myself. Nice, very nice. And I think I know what you like about it. I know that it was the student loans, number one, that they said that they were- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was number one. But I've got to travel. I've yeah. always told my mom when I was younger, like I wanted to, uh, I was going to get me an Italian. I wanted to go to Italy. Mm-hmm. So my second duty station was in Italy. So uh, we yes. lived there mm-hmm. for three years. Um got to embrace the culture my oldest daughter for the longest thought she was Italian because it's the only place I she love was. it <laughs> and we just I've met a whole lot of people mm-hmm. I, the reason why I started my business was because somebody in the military mm-hmm. so if it wasn't that path to, if I wouldn't have taken this path I wouldn't have seen as much as I've seen or be living in Maryland I'm from North Carolina so okay. moving to Maryland was not on the radar at all and I'm just grateful for the opportunities it's provided for me and my family. I love it. I love it. Now you brought up your business. You have to tell me a little bit about this business. I, I really was intrigued with that. It's a DEI marketing agency or branding agency. Branding agency yes. Okay. So the business started mm-hmm. and we were in um, Missouri of all places. Okay. So I've I've hopped around all over the place and I went to Missouri kicking and screaming because nobody go like my first <laughs> instinct like are, are there people like me out there? Are you <laughs> so but I went to Missouri and ended up being the best one of the best duty stations I ever went to. Okay. But a friend of mine, she's in the military also. She's a wedding photographer, very good wedding photographer. Mm-hmm. And she asked me to create this wedding booklet that she gives to her brides. And I was like, I can do that. That I know that program. That's that's my job. And I created it for her. And she was like, you know, somebody was gonna charge me over five hundred dollars to do this. Like, why don't you do this for a business? And I was wow. like, people pay that kind of money for this. <laughs> you don't think about like people don't have those same skills that you do. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you should start a business. So I started the business, and I would like to say in the beginning, I'm saying about the first six to eight months, it was yeah. basically a hobby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing stuff. I really didn't know what was going. I didn't have a niche, have a niche down yet. Okay. And then I was getting prepared to go to my next rank. And mm-hmm. I was sitting in there with a senior advisor and he's looking through my stuff and he's like, it looks good. And he was like, but I'm going to tell you now, women, when you guys get older, you get less competitive. You have babies and you're overweight. So you don't really make decisions you Ooh. just yeah so <laughs> all the shade it was like the shade sandwich but here your mm-hmm. stuff look good but I'm just letting you know what's what's ahead of you yeah, so yeah. I'll just roger roger up roger that all right mm-hmm. got you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I started thinking that I need to uh my business needs to stop being a hobby one I need to niche down and figure out who do I want to help and over time I I went from I was first I was like maybe I help creatives and then I started getting into helping coaches Mm -hmm. and then I started attracting diversity equity and inclusion coaches Mm -hmm. and I started like thinking about my path and why I started my business and some of the inspirational leaders women that I've ran into and how there's all there's always been this glass ceiling yes I um had the honor to 
meet with uh, the six triple eight, some of the survivor members of them. This is all the only all black female uh, battalion wow. that's been in. A, and they don't even get recognition. But they were finally getting a monument made in Fort Leavenworth in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And so they wanted senior female leaders to escort them, Black mm-hmm. female leaders, just to marry the two together. Mm-hmm. And so I'm escorting them. And we spent like two days with these ladies. And they're like 95 years old. They're like wow. World War II veterans. Wow. And I was talking to some of them. And one of them was like, you know what? I just wanted to help. And I really didn't think that we would still be in the military now just because of the way they treated us and look at you it's like she was just so proud like look at you like wow. you got I never would have thought we got this high up in, <laughs> in the world. so there's and I started thinking back to my mission and how I had there's there's still a fight to be fought when it comes to diversity equity and inclusion mm-hmm. and I just want be able to help those coaches put their best foot forward because even though they're helping with the diversity equity inclusion they're still I talk to them there's still this feeling of well I want I can't be too loud or I can't be too colorful yes. it's still with that. and I we help them create a brand for us their website their copy their um voice that is authentic to them but it's still mm-hmm. letting people know like I know what I'm talking about I can be this colorful bold person mm. but I have the check mark google me check my resume <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we got started working with diversity equity and inclusion coaches wow I love it I love mm-hmm. it now m- my question to you Lindsay is what what will you what do you think um today would you say to women who are watching this to inspire them that may be in a bad place right now. They may be starting a business or personally, they may be in a bad place or um, anything, anything inspiring. What would you say to them? It doesn't last forever. In the moment, it feels like it. It does. It feels like you may be at rock bottom. It feels like you don't know what to do. You don't have the answers, but it's okay. You don't have the answers right now. They'll come. And to um, whatever you're, just take the first step. My mom always told me, it's okay to cry. It's okay to be sad, but don't stay down there. Don't don't stay at the bottom. You got to slowly start getting yourself out and you'll get, you'll look back and you'll be like, well, if I haven't hit that spot, that fork in the road where I had to either decide to stay at the bottom or continue to go up, then I wouldn't be where I am and wouldn't be doing whatever I'm supposed to be doing at this moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always say, you know, my my mantra is always that there's always going to be peaks and valleys, but you just have to keep going one foot in front of the other, and then you will make your way, period. You just will. So yeah, yeah. thank you for that, Lindsay. Thank you. How can, we, how can we find you online, Lindsay? So you can find me on Instagram, mm-hmm. um, Pinterest. I'm on all of them. <laughs> 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 but my Instagram and Facebook handle is organizedchaos.designco and my website is organizedchaosdesigncompany.com. Um, I'm usually on face on Instagram cutting up. So if you want to <laughs> jump in a couple videos here and there, so okay. find me on Instagram. Okay, nice. Well, Lindsay, it was so nice meeting you. Nice and thank you. you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to like chat with me and provide inspiration for so many women. Thank you. Thank you so much.